G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing with our BBL Cricket preview series. I'm trying to do a profile for each team in time for the tournament kicking off on December 7th. The first game will be the Brisbane Heat and the Melbourne Stars, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which at this current point in time, I do intend to live stream on the channel. So I hope to see you there. Obviously at the moment, I'm just kind of working through both uh, some uh, AFL content and some cricket content. I'm just accelerating the cricket content as we get closer to the start of the BBL. In today's video, we are doing a profile on the Brisbane Heat, the runners up from last year, who uh, fell very, very closely short, if that's the right phrase. Uh, to winning the entire thing despite finishing fifth last year. On the channel up to this point, I've done a couple of videos uh, on gen uh, general squad news. Uh, I've done a Perth Scorchers a preview and I've done a Melbourne Renegades preview. I've done a Melbourne Stars preview. Uh, so by all means, go and check out those videos as well for some preview content. While you're there, you might as well subscribe to the channel. But yet last year was a one of heartbreak for the Heat who did well despite fin finishing fifth. Um, but they did win three finals on their way to the, the final as well. So it was quite a dramatic and uh, really strong end of the season, you'd have to say. Uh, some of their best performers last year, one of them was Sam Hain, who averaged 45 from just nine innings from England, who is no longer with this team. Uh, but Jimmy Pearson behind that was the top scorer with 334 runs. Michael Nees was also one of the most effective players in last year's tournament with 26 wickets, and Matt Kuhneman as well had 16 wickets as well. So now let's get into uh, what the squad looks like. I have previously uh, posted it on the channel, but I think there's going to be constant updates. So I will flash on the screen again uh, what it is currently saying the squad is, although I will highlight they were missing Nathan McSweeney in here, who I'm pretty sure is part of this squad. But in general, with their ins and outs, they've got two major ins in Paul Walter from England and Jack Wood, also from England. Their outs were James Basley, who's gone to the Adelaide Strikers. Uh, they lost Steckerty to the Melbourne Stars. Sam Hain, like I said, went to the Hobart Hurricanes, as did Sam Heaslett as well. So uh, a few pretty key losses there, I would have said, uh, particularly Hain, Steckerty. Basley was pretty good with the ball as well last year, so... With that in mind, I will give you a quick attempt at my best 11 for the Brisbane Heat, but like every other team, it's going to be subject to availability. So to start off, I've gone with the best available 11 in this particular best 11. So I'm going to start with Kawaja opening the batting, even though he's probably only going to be there for a game or two with Matthew Renshaw. Then there's Manus Labashain, Colin Munro, Nathan McSweeney, who, as I said, I'm pretty sure is still in this squad, uh, despite the fact he's not really mentioned anywhere that I can see. Sam Billings, their big recruit. I think that was a great recruit as their wicketkeeper, as well as their other recruit in Paul Walter, rounding out that top seven. Then we get into the bowlers. We've got Neza, who can bat a bit at eight. Um, obviously, their strike bowler, Jack Wildermuth. Uh, Matt Kuhneman and Mitch Swepson. So a couple of spin bowling options in that team. Now, I should cover the availability issues that the Brisbane Heat are going to be facing. So obviously, there's a test series between Australia and Pakistan starting in mid-December, I think, um, which means that Kawaja and Labashain will get one, at best, maybe two games before that kicks off. But there's also a Prime Minister's 11 game, uh, which will affect the availability of Michael Neeser, Matthew Renshaw, Nathan McSweeney, so I found this in an article, so obviously this plays for them, and Jimmy Pearson as well, their backup wicketkeeper. So, you know, those are all pretty key players. So, I mean, they'll get Kawaja and Labashain, and they won't have the other four players I mentioned, then I presume it will switch. So that best 11 is, is very, it's just conceptual. It's not uh, its not actually what they're going to line up with. Looking at that 11, my general broad analysis is that it's a strong batting order when all those players are available. But like I said, the heat will be hit hard by availability issues. I think there's some decent uh, reserve bowling options like Spencer Johnson uh, could come into this side. But, you know, if Nizo misses any more cricket than that, I mean, he's going to be a chance to play in the test series as well. Um, Matthew Renshaw is probably an outside chance as well. I mean, even if they don't play, they'll get picked in a squad, which means that, uh, yeah, they won't be available for the BBL. But if, so if they miss Neeser for any uh, considerable amount of time, I think this team becomes very, very vulnerable. I still think as well with Kawaja and, and Labashain out of that, that top order, it does become a lot weaker. I, I suppose Pearson will find his way in. Uh, Josh Brown and Max Bryant are other options there. And then other bowling options are Xavier Bartlett and Spencer Johnson. So they're decent, uh, but the, the side gets a lot weaker when you take out some of those, those key players there. Uh, they've got two good spin bowling options in Swepson and Kuhneman as well. Uh, Swepson in particular is having a good Sheffield Shield season uh, to date so far. So hopefully he can carry that forward in for the heat because I think they're going to need it to be honest and as well as they went last year look I'm going to say that I'm not a BBL expert or anything like that I'm much more into AFL but uh, from the outside looking in if they do struggle with these availability issues and when you factor in so much of the squad has changed as well with some key players leaving I find it hard to envisage the Brisbane Heat being a realistic chance 
Uh, certainly to win, I think there's a chance they don't make the four as well. So it'd be interesting to see. But as always, uh, I welcome your comments in the comment section below, guys. So for now, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.